you know what I noticed? That as I went through the various specs, looking at how they function, reviewing them, what they do in Mythic Plus, what they do in raids, what's the rotation, balance changes and all of that, I wasn't very in-depth when it comes to the actual Shadowlands systems. You know, in the pre-patch, you do have all of the new talent changes, the new reworks, whatever new things you might have gotten baseline, some talent swapping around. The only thing you're missing essentially is the new passive effects on your spells that you will gain from level 51 through level 60 as you level. The real things missing are your legendary choice, your covenant choice, as well as your soulbind choice. So in this video, I'm going to go over each and every spec, starting with tanks, and look at their best current best combinations of legendaries, covenant, and soulbind to choose from. And we are starting with a very simple one. The more boring one, the one with the least amount of options, which is Blood Death Knight. Blood Death Knight is rather boring because these legendaries, these two legendaries, have remained the strongest ones for months now. They have not received changes in forever, and they have remained extremely powerful ahead of the pack of the other legendaries. Branador's Might and Super Strain. Branador's Might is essentially a must as a DK because you live and die by your Death Strike, meaning this legendary is essentially way too good to pass up. It's just guaranteed runic power refunds on your death strike most of the time, so it's just very, very powerful. The other one is, you know, on the boring side. It's just a passive DPS increase. I mentioned the first time I passed over these legendaries for tanks, which was like two months ago, that super strain would have been very powerful at the start of the expansion because, you know, you have very low gear, very low scaling, very low power, and this legendary was just giving you free damage. It is going to lose a lot of value later on in the expansion, but at the start it's going to be very powerful, and it is. When it comes to your covenants, for DK, you're split between Kyrian and Ventir. Ventir is particularly powerful not because of the Soulbind tree, not because of the BFF you will link with and gain his passive effects, but because of the active, the actual ability, which is Swarming Mist. You know, Swarming Mist is very, very powerful in AoE. It has a very short cooldown that allows you to use it in most of the bigger Mythic Plus packs. Runic Power Generation is particularly important for DKs because that's what they use to dump. Runic Power Generation is particularly important for Blood DKs. Do you know why, class? Because Unholy and Frost use their runes to unload the bigger portions of their damage. Whereas Blood DK needs Runic Power to unload their Death Strike, which makes it very, very powerful in Mythic Plus. Whereas in Red Encounters, that is not as necessary, especially because you don't have multiple targets to hit with Swarming Mist, so you can settle for a more defensive option with Kyrian. The Let Go of the Past, Soulbind Passive, if you go with Pelagos, if you go with Eclea, you can get Valiant Strikes, you can get Ascendant Vile to make you immune to a bunch of debuffs, as well as, obviously, defensively speaking, the Vial of Serenity itself, the extra health stone you can gain when you go Kyrian. I guess Death Knights will be happy of having less choices and being more boring given how angry they were at the possibility of playing Night Fae and becoming a fairy Death Knight, but Death Do has been nerfed quite a lot over time and now it is no longer the default choice for Death Knights anymore. And now it's not the default choice for Death Knights anymore, so you can rejoice at least there. Now on to another somewhat monothematic spec which is going to be Protection Warrior. Protection Warrior has some very clear legendaries being the best laid out for them. The Wall for Defensive and Thunderlord for Offensive. This goes for both Mythic Plus and Raids, whatever the activity you're doing. The Wall is for your Shield Wall cooldown reduction. I already mentioned it in my tank video, in my Philicraft tank video, that the Wall in synergy with Devastator and Anger Management is very, very powerful for your Shield Wall uptime. Whereas Thunderlord, even though it is a hollow copy of its old version, because now it is capped at 4.5 seconds as a maximum reduction, it is still the best way to go in Mythic Plus, in large mob number encounters. When you go with your standard build, your standard AoE build with Anger Management, Unstoppable Force, Booming Voice, you know, your old BFA talents you're already going with in the first place, as you stack more haste, as you gain more gear, you will progressively gain more and more uptime on your Demoralizing Shout. Demoralizing Shout by default has at best a 17% uptime, you can bring it higher and higher the more you scale into the expansion and Thunderlord can help you with that. And there isn't much room for anything else, mostly because the other 
legendaries for Prot Warrior are embarrassing. Unbreakable Wheel is pretty terrible. It might have some cheese, maybe we will see in some MDI style build, but unlikely. Reprisal is awful, and Mishep and Miro has been tragically nerfed to be terrible now. So you're pretty much forced to choose these two legendaries. When it comes to your Covenant, it is going to be mostly Kyrian. Again, same reasons as DK. You can play with something like Ancient Aftershock because offensively it is stronger. Possibly even defensively. Ancient Aftershock is going to have a mini earthquake effect, just like Elemental Shaman, knocking down the enemies and the damage is higher than Spear of Bastion. The rage generation of Ancient Aftershock is also higher than Spear of Bastion in AoE. The difference is that Spear of Bastion simply is Kyrian and Ancient Aftershock is not. You don't care too much about soul shape as a warrior, you have enough mobility of your own, what you care about is having an extra hellstone, having an extra defensive, being in a more defensive soulbind tree like Clea and like Pelagos. So if you're really a chad and you just care about damage, you might still want to go Ancient Aftershock, but for the overall all-purpose use, Kyrian is still the strongest one. So for both Warrior and Blood Death Knight so far, you don't have that many options. There is some very clear divide between the strongest picks and the, the weaker ones. On to Protection Paladin, which is also a rather straightforward pick. Protection Paladin also had these two legendaries as the best for quite a while, despite the fact that they were nerfed quite a bit, they still remain the strongest. When it comes to AoE, Bulwark of the Righteous Fury is still the strongest. The fact that it has been nerfed to be target capped at 5 times max still makes it the strongest AoE legendary you have. Little the Righteous is now going to do way more damage in your total damage done than before, so it is actually worthwhile to buff and scale its damage like this. Whereas all the Avengers and Grave Sigil is still very powerful in all purpose situations with the chance to reset the cooldown on Avenger Shield. Previously 50%, now nerfed to 35, it is still very powerful. Now, both of these choices are mostly damage oriented. You can synergize with the Oli Avengers and Grave Sigil to give you a defensive element in First Avenger, to give you an Absorb Shield, but it is mostly offensive. When it comes to your Covenants, it is also somewhat similar. Protection Paladin is very offensive based. They don't have a very clear cut Covenant when it comes to defensive. It is very Chad based, it is very all out damage based. As I went over the Red Paladin Covenants for my Feelycraft mini DPS video and the Prot Paladin in the tank video, this is sort of the same argument. Ashen Allo is very powerful in a single window, big burst window, but it is mostly damage. It doesn't give you too much of anything else as a tank when you play with Ashen Allo. And for Kyrian, Divine Toll is the exact same thing. Massive Avenger shield spam as a protection paladin for massive damage. You do get, of course, the Holy Power that you can use defensively, but it is still very, very offensive tuned. In this case, both Kyrian and Ventir were already the better defensively tuned covenants for you, so you would have gone there regardless. For Ventir, you have Draven with Hold Your Ground and Service in Stone that you want to go for, and for Kyrian, it's the same choice between Kleia and Pelagos. Now, on to Brewmaster Monk. I will try to make it a little bit more exciting, because the actual answer for Brewmaster Monk is just play with Storm Stout's last keg, and that's it. There is no other explanation, just use it. It is a very powerful legendary because obviously using an extra charge of keg smash is going to further reduce the cooldown of your bruise, which is your defensive, so having more ways to use it is very powerful. The fact that you have two charges means if you only had one charge, it would come off cooldown and you were essentially wasting usages of keg smash because you were moving from one pack to the next. If you have two charges, and you had one charge on cooldown, you could effectively move from one pack to the next without losing any possible usages of Kag Smash, which becomes very powerful not just in single target, but in AoE as well, for Mythic Plus. As I said, to make it more interesting, Charred Passions and Mighty Power are your options if you want to be more offensive or more defensive. Charred Passions has been subsequently buffed multiple times, starting at 30% extra damage, buffed all the way up to 100%, so if you want to go for full out damage, this is going to out damage the Storm Stout's last Kag Legendary quite easily. And if you want to go for more defensives, Mighty Power is also very powerful. Particularly in situations of higher damage intake, consistent damage intake, so Mythic Plus, rather than tanking a raid encounter with another tank alongside you, 
but the general explanation is that Storm Stout's last keg is more of an all-rounder. You can use it in both situations and still be well off, whereas the other two options are very, very lopsided in offense or in defense. When it comes to Convenance, we see our first proper Necrolord pick, because Bone Dust Brew is very good for Brewmaster Monks. It is very good for both of your offense and your defense. As I mentioned, whenever you have to go over Brewmaster, one of their biggest problems is their shocking lack of damage, going from BFA into Shadowlands, and they have gotten quite a few things that they can use to increase their damage. Bone Dust Brew on just a 1 minute cooldown with a very powerful conduit, Bone Marrow Hops, which when used essentially cuts the cooldown in half, is going to give you this ability up on pretty much every single big Mythic Plus pool, important Mythic Plus pool. Between the damage you can do with Bone Dust Brew, which is for your offensive portion of your kit, and the defense that it grants you, having Tiger Palm and Keg Smash further reduce the cooldown of your brews by one second, it is a very good all-rounder for Mythic Plus. For Raid Encounters, where you want to care a little bit more about defense and a little bit less about damage, particularly something I will mention every time for progress, during progress what you care as a tank is stay alive so we can keep progressing. Weapons of Order becomes the easiest choice because it's a big, thick, meaty cooldown that can give you extra defense, increasing your mastery, as well as giving you an insta reset of your Keg Smash cooldown, which is also going to further reduce the cooldown of your bruise. And also, not to mention, it is the more easy to use Covenant. It's just a, you know, it's just a simple big cooldown. It's not very complicated. It's not going to change your rotation too much or force you to change talents or legendary or of that sort. It is very, very straightforward. And worth mentioning once again, it's Kyrian. Very good options in the Kyrian tree for defensiveness, so that is also why it is preferred. Now we have our two spiciest specs left. A little bit more option, a little bit more variety. So let's go and take a look. First is Guardian Druid. The spec I have shield for a while, so now it's my time to shine. So obviously, as I already mentioned this not too long ago, they have the best legendary, the Natural Order's Will. Recently nerfed, because Blizzard watched my video, so they just said fuck him, and they nerfed the Barskin damage reduction from 15% to 10. It's still an insane legendary that makes the entire build around reducing the cooldown of Barskin down to 36 seconds with your survival of the fittest talent and tough as bark conduit. It makes it the king in defensiveness. However, the legendaries for Guardian are in a similar situation to Monk. You do have a clear standout winner that you can use in both Mythic Plus and Raids in both single target and AoE, but you can have two specialized legendaries for each that can or might surpass this legendary, but only in that particular field. Drought of Deep Focus and Ursox Fury Remembered. Drought of Deep Focus is of course very good because it effectively increases all of your DOTs by 40%, as well as your own rejuvenation or re rejuvenation on yourself by 40%. It is also very good for Master Guardian players who can use things like Cat Weaving while they are tanking to also increase the damage of their Rake and Rip. And then you have Ursox Fury Remembered, which is a very self-explanatory, massive legendary for AoE. It has been nerfed already, now it's only 75% of the damage you do instead of 100, but it is still very powerful, and it becomes exponentially stronger the more targets you are pulling in Mythic Plus. This is also going to scale later into the game, the stronger you become and the stronger Thrash becomes. It is going to scale even harder when you will be able to use two legendaries, and you will be able to use Luffa Infused Embrace, or even stronger, even harder Thrash damage. So you do have some more options. If I were a Guardian Druid, I would obviously go for the Natural Order's Will first, because it is just an all-round legendary, over just going for a specialized one. When it comes to your Covenants, you also have the option, you also have the option to go for offensive, defensive, or a mix of both. The Necrolord Adaptive Swarm is very versatile, because it can function as an extra DOT on the target, or an extra heal over time on yourself. What makes it even powerful is that it's, it is going to increase the effectiveness of your periodic effects on them by 20%. So when we go back to our legendary, Drought of Deep Focus, this covenant is extremely powerful with it, because it is going to synergize very very well. Not only that, but it also passively works with your own active mitigation, Frenzied Region. Frenzied Region already 
increases your heal over time by 20% and is already a heal over time in and of itself, which is going to benefit from the Adaptive Swarm buff. So you can choose if you want to make this a single target offensive DOT or a single target defensive heal over time. It has a very manageable cooldown of 25 seconds, which makes it very convenient to use. And this is a very good all-rounder. Now, if you want to go for the specialized picks, you can go Ventir and go Ravenous Frenzy. Obviously, very big cooldown. Nerfed multiple times already, but it is still going to give you extra damage and healing, which is good as a tank because you are one of the tanks that can heal himself, as well as haste, which is good for both offense and defense. Or you can go, once again, what a surprise for a tank, you can go Kyrian. On top of all of the defensive goodness you can get with Kyrian, you can also get Kindred Spirits, which is the most defensive one of your covenants. Choosing between linking with a tank for the 40% damage reduction or the healer for the 30% increased healing as a cooldown is very good, particularly because the effect in and of itself is as just a one minute cooldown to use, so it is very powerful, but strictly for defense. So once again, similar to Brewmaster, if you wanted to go for the all-rounder, then going for the natural orders with legendary would be the start. On a defensive note, you, you can go Kyrian, and if you want to be an even more of an all-rounder, you can go for Necrolord with Adaptive Swarm. The thing to mention, of course, is that the Necrolord Soulbinds, so the BFFs you will be linking with, are defensively weaker than Kyrian and Ventir as your options. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Now, on to our last of the tanks, and how they are doing right now with all these systems, is Vengeance. Quite a trip throughout the beta. They have changed quite a few legendaries in their power over time. Currently, the two best by quite a bit are Fiery Soul and Rizalix Defilement. Rizalix Defilement used to be insane because Blizzard forgot that Elysian Decree, your Kyrian Covenant, counted as a sigil. So the 8 second cooldown reduction of Rizalix also counted towards Elysian Decree, which made it insane. So they had to nerf it by 75% and drag it down to 2 seconds. And it is still the strongest legendary. So this shows you how busted it was. This is the first example of a very clear divide, not just in legendaries, but in builds. Because now there is a build for Vengeance Demon Hunter, the one I showed in my top 5 things video, and the one I'm showing here, that it is centered around Fairy Brand. Vengeance Demon Hunter has been known for having very bad active mitigation, for having to do damage to heal itself as its way of surviving, having pretty poor cooldowns, very long cooldown on metamorphosis, the nerfed demonic making it even harder to keep up their metamorphosis, but they still had Fiery Brand, which is a cooldown that gives them 40% damage reduction on a single target. Now, it isn't very powerful when you can't further increase the synergy of your toolkit with it, but, but, if you were allowed, for example, to gain a legendary like Fiery Soul, and then go for Agonizing Flames, Burning Alive, and Charred Flesh, you start seeing where this is going. Charred Flesh makes your Immolation Aura extend the duration of Fiery Brand by alpha second per tick, and then Agonizing Flames is going to increase the duration of Immolation Aura, so the duration of Fiery Brand can also be extended, because Immolation Aura lasts for longer, and as you're pushing and pushing the duration of Immolation Aura higher and higher, you talent into Burning Alive, which is going to spread your fiery brand. So you can tag one enemy with 40% less damage done to you, and then you can spread it to all the pack for a 40% damage reduction. Because you are taking fiery soul, your soul fragment consumption is going to further reduce the cooldown of fiery brand, making it have a much, much better and stronger uptime. The downside of this is that your damage is going to fall off a cliff, because you are losing Abyssal Strike, which gives you a double Sigil of Flame AoE damage, and you are losing Spirit Bomb as your AoE finisher. So if you want to go for a much more defensive build as Vengeance Demon Hunter, you can go for Fiery Soul with this setup and it's going to be very powerful as a legendary. Otherwise, you can just go for Rizalix Defilement. You can go back to your Abyssal Strike, you can go back to your Spirit Bomb to have much higher damage, but you're going to be way squishier. Now, since I mentioned Rizalix Defilement and why is it so strong, it is tied strictly to Elysian Decree which brings us to our Covenant. Currently, there is absolutely no reason for Vengeance Demon Hunter to go anywhere outside of Kyrian. Not only is Kyrian very defensive as a Soulbind tree, both Pelagos and 
Kleia that you can choose, but the ability in and of itself is super strong. Not only does it do a lot of damage, 350% damage, which works with Spirit Bomb, works with Frailty. You're going to heal off of this damage, which is very good, but also because it's going to shatter souls, lesser souls, when you hit enemies. And guess what? Razalik's Defilement is tied to using Soul Cleave. Soul Cleave is tied to consuming souls, meaning the more Elysian Decrees you cast, the more souls you spawn, the more you can spend them with Soul Cleave. Guess what? Fiery Soul does exactly the same thing. So now you have two legendaries, both synergizing with soul consumption. And you have a Covenant, which is going to give you massive soul generation. As if this wasn't enough, this Covenant also gives you access to Repeat Decree. The Kyrian Conduit, which is going to create a double Elysian Decree explosion after a one second delay. This is not only powerful because of the damage, it is also powerful because it is going to replicate the soul's generation. So heavy, heavy amount of souls are going to be consumed. So while the options for Vengeance in Covenant are non-existent because you're going Kyrian no matter what, but the legendary options are pretty nice because they also shape the type of build you want to go for. Now guys, as we close the video, after having gone through all the tank, we have to talk one minute figuratively about the soul binds. You know, what we've just seen about the choices of your covenant being mostly Kyrian, some Ventir, and a few Necrolords. So the situation is that at the moment conduit passives. Conduit passives are more important for tanks and to some degree healers than they are for DPS. The flat damage increase that you can get from the passive conduits of your covenant choice have been lowered enough that DPS are just ignoring them for the pure bonus they can get from their active ability. So even if their active ability is from a slightly weaker covenant, they don't care, they just pick that one because it's stronger. But when it comes to tanks, even just something like 2% damage reduction, you know, 10% health shield can massively skew, can massively skew the priority you can give to a certain covenant. And at the moment, that is Kyrian. You know, Pelagos and Kleia are very, very powerful. Pelagos is a let go of the past, has been nerfed multiple times. It went from 5% versatility for 10 seconds to 3% for 6, and it is still very, very powerful. The fact that you can go for Kleia and you can get Valiant Strikes, which is a very nice smart heal, and Ascendant Vial, which is going to further improve the strength of your Vial of Serenity, which is what is going to make Kyrian so powerful. You know, Ventir as a teleport ability, as your utility covenant spell. Night Fae as a blink, and you turn into a, a, a fox that does nothing. Necrolord as, you know, some sort of a catchy shield, which is way stronger for DPS and healers than, than it is for tanks, whereas Kyrian as a flat-out heal, which can also remove a bunch of debuffs from you, which is very, very powerful for tanks. So, unlike the other roles, tank is going to be more susceptible to these type of situations, where maybe Kyrian is the second best ability, maybe even the third best ability of all Covenants, but the Covenant passives tied with the Covenant utility ability are so useful for a tank that they just bypass it and go Kyrian anyways. Other Covenants have some interesting thing as well, like Ventir, with Service in Stone and Hold Your Ground. Service in Stone is a flat-out 10% damage reduction below 40% health, which is obviously very powerful for a tank. And Hold Your Ground is also very powerful for a tank. Not just the, not just the stamina increase, but also the healing increase. Maybe not powerful for a Protection Warrior or a Brewmaster Monk, which don't heal much, but for a Blood Death Knight or even a Protection Paladin, that can be very powerful. So this was the caveat that was worth mentioning. It is not something that is going to be as important, particularly for DPS specs, which are going to go more for just the flat-out stronger ability. Only in the case of a set of disappointing abilities not giving you that much of a damage increase, you will start looking at, okay, then which passive is going to give me the best benefit? And that's where DPS might default to one of the stronger covenants in case of passives. But tanks just do it much more. This was our overall look at the stronger legendary plus covenant combos for tanks i want to know which of you guys is going to completely ignore this because they like the transmog of a covenant and just pick a ludicrously terrible pick for a particular spec just because they want to look cooler and with this i'm going to leave see you guys soon and in the meantime blizzard keep nerfing kyrian <laughs>